Hello friends and greetings for the day. I know pretty much we are delayed. A lot of things have been pending and it's been a long time since we connected together. But uh, yeah, it was of course due to a lot of commitments and many other you know activities happening around with the professional work what I have. So finally I got some time and I think I'm looking forward to have some great consistency with all of you and looking forward to uh, give you more and more content on the upcoming changes. In fact, we have a lot of changes which has happened recently. Uh, the test manager syllabus got revised, the test automation engineer syllabus got revised, and to a certain extent, many more to come on the way. And uh, it's just, just that I was a little occupied, so we could not really create a lot of content for you. But at the same time, I want to promise that I have been responding to all the open comments every single day, making sure that at least I'm responsive to the people who are in need and they get the required assistance from me. So as a part of today's video, we're going to talk about the test manager revision and trying to compare the revision which is done between 2012 and 2024 and how effective this would be for the new engineers at the same time. Like if someone is looking forward to take test manager in 2024 with the new syllabus, how impactful this would be on their career. At the same time, what kind of other changes have taken place along with the syllabus. So let's quickly jump onto the screen and we will take you directly on the official website to make sure that we are not skipping anything and talking everything in particular to that of what is required here. So right here we are on the ISTQB official website which is istqb.org at any point of time if you want the latest and greatest from the body then make sure that you only visit this particular website nothing other than that because may, there are many other portals claiming that they have different information and that's the reason most of us sometimes get confused but that does not really make sense at any point of time so make sure that you should look forward to uh, only uh, visit this particular website to get your uh, to the point information and whatever is written here is the valid criteria or valid information related to any ISTQB certification rather than visiting any other website. So I would really insist that you stick to this particular website and get all your uh, latest information related to certifications at any point of time. So further, uh, of course, as you quickly scroll through, you would find there, uh, the certifications are listed here and you can go ahead and click on the test manager certification and you can be navigated to the right page where you can find every single information related to the certification. And right on the top, if you notice, we find that there is a syllabus change which has happened. And there's an announcement here that the version 3.0 is the latest syllabus of the ISTQB certified tester advanced level. In fact, the name of the certification has also been modified. Earlier, it was called as test manager certification. And now it's been called as test management certification. Also, they are saying at the same time that the 2012, that is the previous syllabus, is set to expire or sunset on 30th July 2025. Now, this is something very critical because I'm getting a lot of comments, a lot of messages from people that, hey, is this new playlist which we have on the internet or is this going to be with effect as and when the announcement is made? Let me tell you, in order to uh, start writing the examination on the new syllabus, it takes a lot of time for the bodies specific to each country to prepare their sample exams respectively and roll out the new examination. So it's not that as and when you would just, you know, hear this announcement of a syllabus change. The very next day you can have the examination ready for you to take up on the new syllabus itself. So as of now, when I'm making this video and uploading this video, only ISQI has the new certification exam that is 3.0 except ISQI no other countries no other bodies have prepared any sample papers on this new syllabus which will take almost which is generic around six to nine months to roll out the new syllabus examination in fact you are in India as well this is information for you that even if you're writing till end of the December or somewhere till February you will be writing on 2012 syllabus and for that I have the playlist on the channel Okay, the playlist on the test manager which I have is basically for 2012 syllabus and 3.0 I'm yet to prepare. The only reason I'm not starting with the preparation on these videos that people will start considering that this new syllabus is only the applicable thing. But we don't want you to confuse. So I'm just, you know, holding me back. 
to <laughs> start preparing on the new syllabus so that you don't get confused at all. So as soon as I see we are closing up, I'll start preparing the new playlist for the 3.0 and you will have it at the right moment so that you can prepare well and write the examinations. But yeah, I'm sorry and unfortunate to say that for those who are appearing in ISQI, you can still opt for 2012 if you want, or you can go with 3.0, but so sorry to say you may not have any courses available on the internet at this point of time for this new syllabus altogether. Okay, to further continue that what changes have taken place. The first thing, if you scroll down further, you would find a very quick snapshot of what exactly the whole syllabus change is all about and what are the new topics which are included here, uh, which we'll discuss in deep dive one after the other. But right now, concentrating on the exam structure, if you notice here, there's a big change in the exam structure altogether. So initially, it was uh, uh, an examination of 180 minutes, which was uh, kind of like three hours examination. And the number of questions were 65. The total score possible was 115. And the passing criteria was 75. But now they have reduced the examination to two hours. And at the same time, the number of questions also have been reduced to 50. And then the total points will be now possible as 88 and the passing criteria will be 58. So that's the first change which we are highlighting. And everything else will only be changed uh, with respect to the content. And let me tell you, the here the content has been kind of increased. So it's not like uh, it's going to have everything what you have in 3.0, uh, sorry, the 2012 syllabus. But at the same time, there are a few things which have been even rolled out, like retired. So we may have to really understand the difference between the two versions in order to grasp the difference between it. So for that, I'm just downloading the official copy of syllabus here from this link. And you would see the syllabus right in front of you. So if I just quickly go through the outline uh, that is going from the uh, chapter one itself. And if you see uh, the first chapter pretty much remains the same. It's not uh, having a much of difference because even in our uh, foundation level, sorry, in our previous 2012 syllabus, we had pretty much the similar topics. We were talking about the test process only from the perspective of planning, monitoring and control and test completion. Because as a manager, you're only responsible to perform these major activities. The other set of activities like analysis, design, implementation and executions are seen as a responsibility of the test engineer. So, of course, the test manager will only be limited to that. And when I move to the next part of it, we are talking about the context of testing, which was pretty much there. But now the content has been revised to the latest and greatest. OK, so earlier we had a content which was very, very generic, not so much correlative to that of the real world practices. But now you would see the content is more relative to the real world. So, yes, we are talking about importance of stakeholders knowledge, like who are your stakeholders? Management, uh, test management in a hybrid software development model. So if you remember, we were only talking about V model. I'm so sorry. I think I'm talking to people who are already been certified. So let me just keep it uh, to the point that in previous labels, we did not have the concept of hybrid development model. We only were talking from traditional and new syllabus is talking more from agile as well as the blend of the multiple development model. So that's where I mean what changes have taken place. Also to add uh, the test management activities for various software development models. So they are talking about both of them. They're also talking about the uh, test management activities in different levels, different types, and then getting into a high level understanding of what is all about monitoring and control. And then we'll deep dive about the matrices in a different chapter altogether. Whereas 1.3 is also introducing you to a deep dive of manager level understanding on what is risk management. So here we'll be covering risk mitigation activity, identification of quality risk, quality risk assessment process, the mitigation through the appropriate amount of testing, and also the techniques for risk-based testing. And finally, what are those matrices and difficulties associated with risk-based testing? In one way, we are taking you to the re-discussion on what is the manager's responsibility and participation when it comes to the risk management in a particular project because this has been discussed in the foundation level already at a high level but here would be more from a decision making point of view and the contribution of a test manager 
And finally, of course, the project test strategy. Here we'll be deep diving because in the new syllabus of foundation, they have not discussed in detail that what is the strategy all about. So in the advanced level, they're going to deep dive with the same. And here we'll be talking about choosing a test approach, uh, analyzing the organizational strategy, project contents, context, and uh, other aspects, and also definition of test objectives. Finally, we are also deep diving in the chapter one itself about the process improvement. And here we are discussing about the ideal as a process improvement model, then model-based test process improvement, and analytical best test process improvement approach, and how retrospective adds overall value to the overall improvement of the test process. So in simple words, I think these are only the things which are needed right now. Earlier in the previous version 2012, we even had more test process models like uh, we had discussion on what is uh, CTP, what is TPI, and what is uh, CMMI, STEP, etc. But right now we're just keeping it to simple understanding of what is ideal and how does it work. And 1.6, so right in the chapter one itself, you will have introduction to everything what you really need to know. So one chapter one will play a very vital role in your examination. And here we'll be talking about good practices for tool introduction, technical and business aspects of tool decision, selection process, consideration and return on investment, evaluation, the tool lifecycle and the set of tool matrices. So I think these topics are pretty much from the initial level itself. That is the previous version. But of course, I saw some of the blended things related to the challenges which are more recent and current from the market. You can see a big transformation uh, <clears throat> between the practices of testing uh, from 2012 to 2004. It's more than a decade right now. So of course, the things have modified, things have changed, and this is just not that simple thing what was initially created. So of course, the syllabus will have more such relevancy to that of our day-to-day -to -day practice today. Whereas well, chapter two will talk about the managing the product, which is with respect to the matrices. So here you'll be talking about matrices for test management activities, monitoring, control, and completion, which is more of like reporting. Then of course, giving you a discussion on what is test progress report and test summary report. Also, we'll be talking about the test estimation. Uh, certainly we'll be getting into uh, estimating what activities testing will involve, uh, that is, estimation of all such activities which happen and factors which may influence the test effort, selection of test estimation techniques. And uh, I think this would give you more an understanding of how estimations are done in the process, which is certainly going to add a lot of value. In fact, this topic was there in the previous levels as well. So this is not something which has changed. It will remain the same to understand. The defect management <clears throat> it is the chapter where we'll be talking about how the defects are managed at the manager level. Of course, uh, talking about the defect lifecycle, cross-functional defect management, specific of defect management in agile uh, teams, because that's the trend which we are talking about. So earlier, we did not have this topic. Now we have this one. Defect management challenges in hybrid software development, defect report information that what should we include, what is not important, and what is critical enough to add at any point of time. And finally, defining process improvement actions using defect report information. So put together what exactly it takes for a test managing organization to take care of defect management in terms of their details, uh, classification, identification, tracking their progress, and so on and so forth. So this particular section, this particular chapter will take care of all these topics. Whereas chapter three, we'll talk about the test team and uh, we'll Take you through the understanding of what it takes to build a wonderful team which is more uh, dynamic at the same time fulfills the requirement of different development model and how we can build a perfect team at any point of time so here we'll be talking more about the typical skills within the four areas of competencies what are they that you will see in this syllabus of course analyze required test team member skills uh, analysis on the required skill set then assessing the test team member skills, developing the test team member skills, and then managing skills required to manage a test team, motivating or demotivating factors for a test team in certain situations. I think in our previous labels, that is 2012, we had these topics pretty much like what is motivation, what is appreciation, how to build a better team for testing. But now I think we'll talk more 
from the latest and greatest that what are the real challenges of the testing team today in after the 10 years of time and how exactly a test manager can look into that in order to make sure that everything is up to the mark okay and finally of course talking about the stakeholder relationships which we'll talk about the cost of quality cost benefit relationship of testing i think this is something very important which was supposed to be included in the syllabus and earlier in 2012 we did not have this topic at all so i think at this point of time having this information being included in the syllabus would add a lot of value so put together this is all what we have in our syllabus and rest everything is just the appendix which is talking about how the syllabus has been designed and so on and what kind of information you can look forward to and you will have all the four k levels that is k1 k2 k3 k4 right so in a very nutshell way we just told you that uh, how this exactly the syllabus change has been designed and pretty much you have something which is more relevant to that of realistic practices and can be easily applied so the reason I was talking about the difference is just to let people know that for time being, as you are not going to find a lot of content on the internet, then my playlist can still be a savior with those different topics which are new. Okay, except that everything else is there in the syllabus. So all you have to do is still follow the same playlist for the time being, but additionally go through the new topics, what I highlighted and look them into this new syllabus rather than in my playlist because my playlist is certainly outdated uh, with respect to that of the old syllabus but for the new syllabus we will have a new playlist being created but as it will take some time meanwhile the old playlist would be of great help to still build the required foundation as majority of the topics do still remain the same but a blend will always be there so for the time being i would suggest stick to the syllabus read that and get the complete understanding of it and other than that you know, you can always reach out to me and I will be more than happy to assist you. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the content. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.